G'day, Jeff Lewis here from Seriously Series, and welcome to another episode in our trip preparation series. Now here today, you've probably already guessed it, we're going to do an episode on the mighty Land Rover Parenti. And what I'm going to be showing you is the typical equipment, spare parts, and all the rest that I take away with me just on a short trip. I've actually been away for about oh, two, three days out in the Australian Outback, and I'm just gonna show you what I take typically on a shorter trip. This obviously varies compared to a longer trip with supplies and all the rest. But anyway, should be interesting video as always, so as always, you know exactly what to do. Click on that subscribe button down below, click on that notification button too, but most importantly, stay tuned. So starting at the front of the vehicle, and you guessed it, the Pioneer tool set. It doesn't matter whether I'm doing a day trip or I'm going away for a month. I always take these with me. They are so, so handy. And uh, it's got, gotten me out of trouble a number of times. So they're a good one to take. Uh, these are basically just the Cyclone range, which is an Australian made, I guess, um, tool set you could say and you can pick these up from any half decent hardware store whether it be Bunnings or, or Mitre 10. Um, I picked these up from Bunnings about oh, six years ago and they're still going good. Every couple of months I take them off and sand them back and put a bit of decking oil or a bit of lanolin on the wood. Uh, lanolin's really good and this is a trick that Damon actually made known to me uh, because it actually works nicely on your hands and it oils the timber too so it stops your hands cracking up and you know going as hard as boot leather but anyway we'll move to the back of the vehicle and to be honest that's where most of the action actually is righty go so where the magic happens you could say uh, jerry can holders typically i take 20 litres of diesel with me uh, regardless as if it's an overnight trip or two or three or four days um, the reason being is it's just handy having that extra 20 litres in reserve. Um, I don't know, I just feel a little bit more safer and secure uh, doing it. And I guess you could argue too, if worst case scenario, and obviously pretty, pretty apocalyptic, but if your fuel tank springs a leak, which actually it has done in the past, then it's nice to have a little bit of extra fuel just to top it up if it's dripping out the bottom at, a, at an alarming rate. Uh, here, obviously, 20 litre container of water, which is fantastic. This is the ProQuip uh, jerry cans, and these are fantastic. Really nice thick uh, wall on them, or thick mould. Whereas I find the, the clear or the blue cheap and nasty ones just aren't worth the time and the effort. The O-rings are absolutely... <clears throat> in the lids and the seams tend to split and the plastic is thin and they tend to chafe away like nothing else so that's my opinion that's what works for me um, so yeah that's all i have to say there uh, but in the back basically i try and keep things pretty simple uh, there's no fancy mochaccino machines in here there's no hidden keg of beer um, and there's no other, you know, bubbled water devices or anything like that. Uh, we've got a high lift jack plate, very, very handy. As I've shown or talked about before, this can double as a chopping board or cheese platter, which it has in the past. Uh, jumper cables, always handy. And then, because I've been away doing, not film work, but uh, other work, I usually take a chainsaw with me because a lot of the tracks and a lot of the areas that I have to access either no one's been before or no one's been down these tracks in 
50, 70, 80 years, some of them. So they're basically just a slight, I guess they're just a slight sort of parting in the actual vegetation. So they can be pretty thick. So using a chainsaw is a necessity. Wheel chocks are really, really handy, particularly, I know it's as flat as a tack out here, but you never know. If you're jacking up your car and you're changing that wheel and it moves a little bit, um, yeah, it can, it can be a nasty end and if it doesn't get you, it can still be a pain in you know what trying to get the car back onto four wheels. So wheel chocks are great and there, there is a second one in here too. Uh, camp table, I use a, a couple of different tables depending on what kind of camp I'm setting up, but this one's uh, one of my favourites. It is a Coleman table. I forget the dimensions, but basically it folds out, uh, gives you a nice surface to work on, plenty of space, but the great thing about it is because it folds back up, it doesn't take up much space in the back of your Land Rover. The Coleman dual fuel stove, I've talked about this before, um, it works really, really well for me. It doesn't have to work for everyone else, but I love it. I love the fact that I can just take a little five litre five litre jerry can of petrol which I can also use to top up for my chainsaw too if I'm running a little bit low on juice so and it also helps to light a fire if the uh, wood's a little bit wet so many many uses as always. Uh, camp chair obviously, uh, grab me gear can't do a trip preparation video without talking about grabbing gear. These guys are just fantastic, or Jimmy himself is fantastic. And these are just a real tough, sturdy canvas bag, as you can see. Clear top, so I can see exactly what's in it. And this is basically just rope, um, yeah, rope, guide ropes, uh, an assortment of pegs for my awning on the side of the vehicle, but also. Uh, depending on what I'm doing, I'll chuck in a canvas tarpaulin and, and I'll put that up in the trees and that'll be sort of my base because generally um, I'll make a base camp and I'll be driving out in the bush every day or, or walking or whatever. Uh, I've covered this before in the trip prep video I did on the ser for the Series 2 Land Rover. And this is basically, try and do it without spilling it, it's basically just an assortment of electrical items. Uh, the spare wheel bearings, split pins, there's uh, steel wool, which is actually really, really handy for cleaning up things. Uh, if you forget matches, you can actually use your jumper cables or some wire on your batteries and just short it out and that'll heat up. And if you put that in some nice dry tinder, it'll actually catch a light. So there's a multimeter in here, there's an assortment of different connections, there's a couple rolls of I think three or four mil uh, electrical wire both in black and red so you can designate between positive and negative, that's why you always have two different colours. Uh, and nuts and bolts too in the BSF and Whitworth variety along with uh, standard UNF and metric because you just can't have enough nuts and bolts if you own a Land Rover. Uh, we've got obviously the Wolf Pack. The Wolf Pack. Basically, in here, uh, this is just something I've sort of made up, which I have on the shelf at home in, in the Landy Cave, and I can just basically pick it up, chuck it in the car, and I know what's in there. So it's just a variety of different. Uh, condiments you could say so there's a little bit of UHT milk so that's enough for your cereal or cup of tea coffee in the morning got to have some nice rosella chutney for your nice damper or bread that you might bake on the fire and then other things like I guess uh, Deb when things get really really desperate and yeah matches salt and pepper baked beans, just other tinned and non-perishable items, knife, chopping board, a bit of washing detergent and a sponge so I can clean up my dishes after I've cooked up a feast. And 
that's pretty much, there's enough in here for me to live off probably for a week. So it's just nice and simple and doesn't take up much room. And they're just a nice size, the wolf pack. They just fit in pretty much anywhere. Uh, we've then got a just a cheaper uh, plastic container from Bunnings, and basically in this has all my cutlery, cutlery and cooking utensils. And generally, I just take a stoneware Coleman stoneware uh, fry pan, pot, colander. Um, wooden spoon, it's always handy, good wooden spoon, a spatula and a few other items too. So I can pretty much make just about anything I need uh, out bush. So that's probably the main camping items. Uh, air compressor, always take one of them. And one of the other items I should talk about when I, since we're on the subject of air, and it's not the fact that I'm full of hot air, I hope not. is this. Now this is a bit of a sad sorry kit, so that's because it's been literally everywhere. Uh, this is a tyre plier engineering kit and this is basically, it's got a set of tyre pliers in here, I won't take them all out. That's one of them and these are fantastic. These are actually handcrafted in Australia and particularly because I run the standard rims here, I actually have to run inner tubes in them, even if I'm running a, a tubeless tyre, and it's actually because of the rim design, if you're thinking, why on earth does he do that? So if I get a piece of steel, or if I get a, a stick, which both have happened in the last three months, that go through my tyre and puncture the inner tube, I've actually got to take the tyre off the rim, and I've actually got to put a new inner tube in. So you need to have a set of tyre levers. And really, they're one of those things that you hope that you don't have to use because it is a bit of a cumbersome task, but it's one of those things you'd be silly if you didn't have a set if you're doing a lot of remote work. So, tyre levers are obviously in there. Uh, in here is a puncture repair kit and that basically has patches and lots of goops and all the rest and solvents so I can actually stick the actual uh, Guess they're patches on properly. That's what I was trying to say. <coughs> it's been a big couple of weeks. Uh, one of the other items that I've forgotten to mention, which I think is just absolutely brilliant, doesn't cost you a cent, you don't need to go out and buy the latest and greatest, is a half decent Barbie plate. This one I picked up at Anaconda. Uh, oh gee, that's a while ago. It would be at least getting close to 10 years ago and it's still flat. It's pretty good. Um, but it's great. If you're not using it on the campfire, I still open it up and I actually put it near my chair and then I've got a little table right next to it and I can put my little bowl of nuts, chips and other condiments there and Obviously a fermented beverage or distilled beverage of choice. Uh, that's probably a, just about everything. There is one other item I want to show you because this is really, really good. Now, as I've mentioned in previous videos, we try and work with a number of different companies and we're quite big on trying to actually help promote uh, local companies. And one of the really good companies here in Kalgoorlie is Goldfields Off-Road. And they are a real dedicated team to outback travel in this part of the world. And they obviously work closely with Iron Man. And when I first got this, I thought it was a little bit gimmicky, but it's actually really, really handy. And you're thinking, oh, it's a backpack, but it's so much more than just a backpack. This is actually uh, my cutlery. And we've modified it a little bit because the plates weren't exactly man size. But basically, you've got a picnic rug, you've got wine glasses as you can see. Down the bottom here we've got a bottle opener and cork. And we've got a nice little tea towel there also. 
salt and pepper. And then we've obviously gone, Damon, Mike and myself, we've gone for the man size enamel plates. Now that's great, because it just keeps it all in one spot. And I can just have it on the shelf at home, and I can just pick it off, chuck it in the car, any Land Rover I'm in, and I know exactly what's in there, instead of fumbling around in some decrepit Tupperware box. So it works really good for me. I'm really impressed, and it's one that's definitely going to stay in the kit. Now, one thing that I haven't got with me, because it's back home, because I always need my tools, is actually tool kit. And I've got another grab me gear bag uh, for this. So I'll just run through with you now what I usually take. I take a half inch socket set, I take a Whitworth socket set, I take a set of Imperial and Metric spanners, which you can get a really good combination set through a store here in Australia called Repco. And they go on special for about $200. So very, very cheap with a lifetime warranty. Now, the reason why I take Imperial and Metric is because a 13mm spanner is pretty close, not the same, but pretty close to a half inch Imperial. So you've basically got two spanners with you and you'll be able to get yourself out of trouble. So taking one set, I find, isn't enough, particularly if you're having to take a prop shaft off because a universal joint's failed or you're having to replace a, a gator on your front prop shaft, which you do have to do on these vehicles. And the gators are made out of rubber, so they tend to foul up from time to time. Then I'll take internal and external circlet pliers. I'll take a, I guess, a smorgasbord of screwdrivers with me, both in posi drive or flat blade and Phillips head. And I'll take a set of feeler gauges with me. And what else will I take? Pretty much, I'll Thin nose pliers I'll take. I'll also take a set of broad nose pliers or fencing pliers because these are really great if you've got something that's broken on the vehicle and you're actually having to take some fencing wire out of the bush, salvage it and actually use it to, I guess, splint or fix your vehicle. You really need a set of fencing pliers. Um, your normal set of pliers just won't really cut it. So. That's, uh, that's usually what I take. And there's probably a few other things in there that I've missed. One other thing that I definitely haven't mentioned is Loctite. That's always a good one to take too. So that's, that's generally enough to get myself out of trouble. Um, I sort of adopt the method of taking enough tools, a little bit like uh, Reckless Kelly, those of you who know of him, to basically rebuild your vehicle from scratch. And pretty much with most of those tools, you can do 99% of most of the jobs that come up. But anyway, we'll have a look at the side of the vehicle uh, because there's some interesting little cubby holes there and there's a few more interesting bits of equipment in there also. So one of the things I love about this vehicle is just the thought that's actually gone into actually engineering it and making it a practical vehicle. So first things first, you need a proper key it's not all keyless entry with these vehicles. And you've got a little cubby hole here on this side, which is the passenger side, and on the driver's side. So typically on the passenger side, I carry a couple of heavy duty inner tubes. These are actually truck tubes, which uh, have a thicker rubber than your typical, I guess, passenger vehicle inner tubes. And they're really, really handy to have. Uh, obviously a selection of bow shackles. I haven't got round to trying the soft shackles yet. I guess I'm just a bit more hardcore. I don't know, I'll leave you to decide that. Then I've got a bag in here and this has basically got a rated snatch strap winch extension strap. Not that I've got a winch on the vehicle but if it looks like there's a few storms coming, some heavy rain coming my way, I'll chuck the turfer or the come along or the, the hand winch in the actual back and that's rated for two ton and to be honest uh, I've had that for gee over 10 years and I've probably used it half a dozen times and it's more than enough to get yourself out of trouble and a lot of people don't like hand winches because you have to work you have to exert yourself but 
it's actually a really good deterrent because you don't get as gung-ho when you're going down a track because you're like oh if I get stuck I'll just use the winch if it's 40 degrees and you've got to use the hand winch it's not a good day so anyway that's that's what's in there there's a few riggers gloves in there also which are the typical leather gloves which are what you want to actually wear when you're dealing with all this stuff and particularly steel cable and uh, that's that we'll hop over to the other side Radio. so once again the magic key okay so in this side this is probably the side that I use the most it's the driver's side so in this bag here we've got a bottle jack which is rated for three ton which is more than enough because you've got to think about it the whole vehicle itself unladen weighs three ton so there's no way you're going to be lifting the entire vehicle up you're only going to be lifting one ve uh, one one wheel at a time so you know you don't need a 20 ton bottle jack really now these are fuel filters I generally take two to three of these depending on what kind of trip I'm doing uh, the reason being is because this is a Isuzu engine and it is a Land Rover not a Land <coughs> Cruiser uh, it is a little bit harder to get parts in very very remote communities and if you're taking one fuel filter with you you you're living on the edge because it's quite common out here to get quite average going fuel that can be full of sand it can be full of water and a lot of other muck so it always pays if you're doing a big trip to take two or more spare fuel filters with you before you leave on your trip too. put a new fuel filter in your vehicle that way you're not setting yourself up to fail so that's that's my little bit of advice and I've I'm not just telling you that because it's a nice thing to say I'm telling you that from my own experience because I've been caught out by it spout for the jerry can because one of the things that the Parenti doesn't have like the series 2 and 3 is an actual funnel that comes out of the fuel filler we'll just get the bottle jack out of the way because once again got another grab me gear bag in here so this is obviously another grab me gear bag these are just these are so good and they really fit, fit in with the Land Rover ethos but these are basically the other spare parts that I take um, that are I guess uh, specific for the actual Parenti itself now these are actually I'll just put that down these are actually hub rebuild kits and I take two of these so this has everything that I need to basically rebuild the hub there so it's got an inner wheel bearing, outer wheel bearing, it's got the races for each bearing, it's got the stub axle seal, it's got a new circlip, it's got a new rubber boot that actually goes over uh, the actual dry flange itself and it's got the lock washer in there too. So that is absolutely best bang for your buck. I purchased these from John Craddock in the UK and they do it as a kit. Uh, these are actually a genuine kit, so they've got the Timken roller bearings in it. None of that other <clears throat> funny kind of Chinese made stuff. Only, only the best. Uh, fan belt. Uh, because this is an FFR, I have to take three fan belts. I have to take a spare for the alternator, crank pulley and water pump and then I have to take another two for the generator so lots of fan belts uh, a full set of radiator hoses and yes there's more than one radiator hose in here and then I also take a myriad of seals and these are for the actual transmission itself so if I blow a seal I can actually change it on the run and that's that's pretty much it. Um, the Isuzu motor itself, the 4BD1, is an incredible, simp incredibly simple engine. That's what I was trying to say. I've got to stop multitasking on camera. And so, you know, very little, there's very little that can actually go wrong with it. So, 
uh, you don't really need to take a huge amount of spare parts with you. Uh, and the LT95 as a transmission is absolutely fantastic. Um, you know, the old seal goes from time to time, but that's, you know, that's pretty typical. It's just making sure it's not going to rust or corrode. And, you know, it's always important to leave a bit of oil behind to mark where you've been. Um, and the stub axle seals or the stub axle seals are pretty good on these vehicles too because they've got actually a double lip compared to the series Land Rover which is a single lip so you don't really have too many problems there. One of the things I really would suggest for anyone who's getting into these vehicles or looking at doing a bit of work on these vehicles and that is to buy good quality seals. There's a company called I think Cortec and they're British made seals for the Land Rovers. They cost, they're not cheap, they do cost a bit, but they actually fit. You can buy some cheaper versions from other companies and they don't fit properly. They're just off by a tiny, tiny little bit and it probably comes back to QAQC, quality control. And you put them on, you go down the road for 500 Ks or so and oil and grease starts going everywhere so it's just a waste of time you know treat yourself get the best of the best because you know these are the best anyway we'll move to the front of the vehicle rightio i got a little bit ahead of, ahead of myself there i do apologize but i just get so excited talking about this kind of stuff uh we've actually got a 65 liter fridge freezer in here and i should talk about this a little bit i've mentioned it before on the channel but why not talk about something again if it's well worth talking about? So as I said, it's 65 litres. We've got a fridge freezer. The freezer would be probably about 40 litres. The freezer unit would be around about 35. Iron Man itself, as many of you know, it's no angle. Certainly not. But bang for your buck, I really cannot see how you could find a better fridge out there on the market. I've been out in 40 degree heat literally two days ago and when we travelled through the interior of Australia it was getting pretty close to that every day and we were enjoying, get this, icy poles, frosty fruits out of the freezer and every day after I've done a hard day's work I know I can crack that fridge open and pull out a nice cold beverage. That is very important. So check them out if you're looking for a fridge freezer. I think they're great value for what you can pay for them. And you know, this thing's been on corrugation since day dot over the last three months. Haven't had a problem. So anyway. Righty oh, so I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Trip Prep. Obviously I've try to breeze through it relatively quickly so you know it keeps things a little bit more interesting but these really are a great vehicle for traveling in the I guess the interior of Australia they're simple rugged and they are surprisingly reliable I really haven't had any problems with it at all and you know you don't need a lot of fancy kit obviously as I've showed you to be able to live comfortably out in the bush you've just got to find the right kit that's right for you and that's really the key thing we all have certain luxuries that we like to take away with us and it all differs from time to time so if you need a fancy mochaccino machine or a nice chilled keg of beer in the back then so be it anyway thanks for watching this video and if you're enjoying the content here at seriously series then please do consider supporting us via patreon all proceeds go to producing these videos and a heck of a lot more and if you're new to the channel just trying to figure out who we are what we do and all the rest then click on that subscribe button down below click on that notification button too and that way you won't miss out on one single video anyway hope to see you in our next video